Back chair, now recognize Mr. Conley from Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Perriman, I'm going to try to cover a lot of territory, so let's be quick. Uh, the gentlelady next to you decried the fact that uh, the Biden administration is impeding energy production in the United States. Do you happen to know what the daily oil and gas production is in the United States right now? I don't have the precise figure, but I know it hasn't been impeded. 13.4 million barrels. Is that the largest in the world right now? I believe so. Is it also the largest in American history? Um, I believe it is. And are we now exporting energy because we have so much of it? We are. Are we, in fact, energy dependent? Uh, independent. Um, I, I believe we're close. Thank you very much. So much for the failure of the Biden administration. Infrastructure. Uh, also comments about infrastructure. Did uh, the Trump administration have numerous infrastructure weeks? We're going to we're going to promote infrastructure hmm, six, 12 times. They did. They did. Did they ever pass an infrastructure bill? They did not. Did President Biden pass an infrastructure bill? He did. Is it also the largest infrastructure bill in American history? The Biden-Harris infrastructure bill is the largest in American history. And pretty comprehensive. It covers lots of different kinds of infrastructure. Is that correct? M many infrastructure and lots of investment. Right. Now, Ms. Moby has an interesting revisionist history with respect to foreign policy, which happens to be my beat. So let's, re let's visit foreign policy. Uh, decrying Afghanistan. Uh, and. Uh, so I gotta I gotta go back in history because I remember my other committee having Ambassador Khalilzad, who was the negotiator for President Trump on Afghanistan. Is it true that the United States under the Trump administration had direct negotiations with the Taliban in Doha and excluded the Afghan government from that table and those negotiations? the very government purportedly we were there to support. That is true. Did that agreement that Ambassador Khalil is on behalf of President Trump negotiate with the uh, Taliban, did that also involve the release of 5,000 Taliban prisoners, many of whom were in prison because they were suspected terrorists? Yes. 5,000, have I got that right? That's the, those are the figures I'm familiar and with. And did that agreement also actually stipulate a, a full and complete withdrawal of U.S. troops uh, by May of 2021. I recall that it did. Right. And did President Biden inherit all of that? And more. And did he try to extend the withdrawal to buy time to avoid the very chaos, unfortunately, we experienced? That is what I understand. And do you think it would be fair to say that actually if we're decrying what happened that summer, we might want to look at the antecedents and the discouragement and the demoralization of the Afghan government and military from resisting the Taliban, given the fact that the sponsor uh, of the Afghan government, purportedly the United States, had clearly abandoned that government. <clears throat> Would that be a fair statement, do you think? Um, I, I believe so. Okay. She also talked about Ukraine, mm, that somehow we should have you know, anticipated what was going to happen. Um, was there a president of the United States who withheld Javelin missiles necessary for the defense of Ukraine and threatened to, uphold, to hold all, withhold all military assistance to Ukraine uh, until and unless the president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, provided political dirt on a political opponent? I believe there was, and it was the former. And was that president, in fact, impeached for that very phone conversation over that very issue? Yes. And would it be fair to say that that development that threat and that withholding of weapons uh, might be construed, if you were Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin, as a sign of weakness on the part of Ukraine and a sign that maybe the United States wasn't going to be there should something bad happen between Russia and Ukraine. Seems like a plausible. And might that be enhanced by the fact that that same president, President Trump, actually praised President Putin on numerous occasions and even said that he trusted his word over U.S. intelligence with respect to Russian interference in the 2016 election. That is unfortunately what the former president And said. finally, Iran and nuclear weapons. Was there not an agreement uh, that the United States actually led that involved Russia and China, Europe and Iran, there was uh, to limit nuclear weapon production in Iran? There was a historic agreement. And was it working? Yes. In all respects? I believe so. Uh, inspected by IAEA -E and the Trump administration and certified by both? Yes. Is that correct? Uh-huh. And what happened to that treaty? Uh, President Trump pulled out. And has Iran been less uh, 
um, active in producing nuclear weapons or more? Iran is now a greater threat because of that failure of diplomacy. So much for efficacy. Just thought I'd revisit that revisionist history of foreign policy. Thank you.